Sally, uh, who is elsewhere, uh, and also a welcome to those who are joining us uh, online from wherever you are throughout uh, the region and beyond. This is the second uh, Sunday in the season of Epiphany and a sentence from Scripture. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of Israel, from John uh, chapter 1 and verses 41 and 49. Can we begin then with the singing of a hymn? Lord of creation to you be all praise and for those who are joining us online you can sing to your heart's content uh, but for us we're called upon to uh, hum along. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. A time of silent a reflection and self-examination 
as we prepare to confess our sins. And let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the assurance of God's forgiveness in the words of absolution. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for this day, Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is now exalted as Lord of all, and pours out his gifts upon the church. Grant it that unity which only your spirit can give. Keep us in the bond of peace and bring all creation to worship before your throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now for the reading from the scriptures. The Old Testament reading this morning is from 1 Samuel, chapter 3 verses 1 to 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realised that the Lord was calling the boy. 
So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 139. Verses 1 to 5 and then verses 12 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. O when I sit or when I stand, you comprehend my thoughts long before. You discern my path and the places where I rest. You are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, Lord, know it altogether. You have encompassed me behind and before and have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot endure it. Verse 12. For you have created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for you are to be feared. Fearful are your acts and wonderful your works. You knew my soul, and my bones were not hidden from you, when I was formed in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my limbs when they were yet imperfect, and in your book were all my members written. Day by day they were fashioned, and not one was late in growing. How deep are your thoughts to me, O God, and how great is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they are more in number than the sand. Were I to come to the end, I would still be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Reading from 1 Corinthians 6, 12 to 20. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to you, not know that whoever is united to is a prostitute becomes one body with her. For it is said, the two shall be flesh. But every one united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the, for the fornication sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you were bought with a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body. For the word of the Lord.
The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 1, and beginning at verse 43. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We live in tumultuous times. A pandemic has uh, disrupted the world. Uh, The normal pattern of our daily lives has changed. And even here in this church, worldwide over 90 million people have now contracted the coronavirus. As of the 15th of this month, 93 million people have contracted uh, the virus. Over 2 million uh, have now died. Uh, In the United States of America, nearly 400,000 people have died. The latest figures are 388,000 697. In the United Kingdom, over 86,000 people have died. And we pray here uh, in this church uh, of St John the Baptist at Lambton with increasing concern for uh, relatives and friends overseas impacted uh, by this disease. We have friends, family, who are in the UK and in the United States. And daily we pray for you. In Australia, the death toll stands at 909. And that is mercifully low by comparison. Thankfully, vaccines are becoming available. But for many, sadly, it will be too late. We live in tumultuous times. The word tumult and the word uh, tumultuous, they mean uh, uproar, they mean commotion, they mean violent uproar, they mean a profound uh, disturbance. In the United States of America, the tumult and the shouting has not died. It has not abated since the President's supporters stormed the Capitol, alleging a rigged presidential election. This is despite repeated official court decisions declaring the the election to be free, fair and final. Australia is not unaffected by these events. Politicians and members of the general public hold opposing sides, even within families. 
often fed by conspiracy theories and extreme views aired on social media. And a concern is emerging of a decline in the value and values of Western democracies and their ability to confront fragmentation and dissent. And perhaps unwittingly, some churches have been caught up in this destabilising trend. We long for the tumult and the shouting to cease. This week, on Wednesday, the 20th of January, 2021, under tightened security, President-elect Joseph R. Biden, Jr. and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will be inaugurated, respectively, as President and Vice President of the United States of America, with Kamala Harris, the first woman to hold that office. Our fervent prayer is in the words of Rudyard Kipling's hymn, known as the Recessional, and especially the second verse of that hymn when we sing the tumult and the shouting dies, the captains and the kings depart, still stands thine ancient sacrifice, a humble and a contrite heart. Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget. And the ancient sacrifice in that verse draws us back to the cross of Christ, his sacrifice for the sins of the world. Still stands thine ancient sacrifice. A word on a preacher's responsibility. It is the responsibility of the Christian preacher to proclaim the gospel and to explain the good news of Jesus within its biblical context and then to apply that good news in the context of his or her own time. That is, the Bible in one hand and the newspaper or its equivalent in the other. Because we use an internationally agreed lectionary, it is possible as Joe Biden goes to Mass today, as he does each Sunday, that he will hear today's reading from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. And it is possible that he might hear a sermon on this text three days before his inauguration as President. So I think it might be important to take a closer look at today's Gospel reading, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. Jesus is calling Philip and Nathanael to be his disciples. To Philip he says, follow me. And there is an instant and there is a positive response. To Nathanael... Somewhat of a sceptic, Jesus spends time with him as Nathaniel comes to believing and stating a declaration of faith. A textual problem needs to be resolved at the outset. Elsewhere in the New Testament, the Apostle Philip and Bartholomew are named together. Matthew, Mark and Luke. Bartholomew is a surname a family name, and it is suggested that Nathaniel in John's Gospel may have been Bartholomew's first name. Now, if not, uh, Nathaniel remains a follower of Jesus like us, though not among the twelve, but a follower nonetheless. So unpacking the text then, there are three distinct sections. One, searching and sharing. Two, 
scepticism meets shrewdness, and three, sincerity and spontaneity. So the first, searching and sharing. This is from verses 43 uh, to 45. Jesus has gone to Galilee uh, and he's looking, he's searching for Philip. And Philip was from Bethsaida, a town at the northern tip of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus finds him. Christian faith begins with Jesus searching for and finding us, as he did with Philip. Praise God for that time when Jesus found you and found me. And Jesus, of course, is still searching for others. But in this text, he then expands as Philip finds Nathaniel, who shares the good news with him. And Philip has a mission instinct. He could not hold the message to himself. He had to share it. And Christians, those found to be in Christ, are called to share their experience of Jesus with others, as Philip did. So like Jesus, we are called to search in his name for those who may be open and willing to come to him. It's the mission instinct. And these tumultuous times are in some ways no different to any other time. The difference may be that in times of uproar and tumult and disturbance, there may be a greater desire for joining with others in the search for peace, in bringing a sense of calm, a quest in the hymn, the tumult and the shouting dies. So this morning we pray for Joe Biden. He is a follower of Jesus, as he searches for and he finds and he calls not only his cabinet, but he calls many others as well, that together the Spirit of God might fill them and others with a selfless divine love, committed to the service of others and committed to eradicating the coronavirus, working together for this end and that they will be disciplined and exercise power with humility and empathy and compassion, that they will be uni agents of unity, healing, justice and peace. The tumult and the shouting dies as we respond to Jesus' call to follow him. On a personal note, remember that time when you responded to Jesus' call to you, when he said to you, follow me, and you did respond. And as you thank God for that time and the change that it brought about in your life, we do ask for others today that if you've never heard that call from Jesus before, follow me, that today you might respond to his call and follow him. But we move on in the text to scepticism, meeting shrewdness. This is from verses 45 to 46. Philip and Nathaniel were students of the scriptures. They were looking for the expected Messiah. They were looking for the anointed one. And now their studies were bearing fruit. Philip tells Nathaniel, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph, of Nazareth. <clears throat> but Nathaniel is cautious of Philip's news. Can anything good come out of Nazareth, he asks. Now there could be some geographical rivalry here. Nathaniel, we know, is from the village of Cana, only a few kilometres uh, from Nazareth. Uh, a short distance up the hill, as uh, N.T. Wright tells us. It's as if someone from uh, Newcastle was asking if anything good could come out of Maitland, keeping in mind that I'm from Maitland. <laughs> or uh, someone from Maitland asking if anything good could come out of Greta. Well, my brother-in-law comes from Greta. 
but you get the idea. Of course good things come out of Maitland, and of course good things come out of Greta, and of course great things come out of this little village of Nazareth that no one really knows about. And Philip's response to Nathaniel is shrewd, and it's sensible, and it's sensitive. What does he say? He says, come and see. And as we commend the Christian way, there will be times when we need to be shrewd. We need to be sensible. We need to be sensitive. There will be those who are sceptical about the Christian faith with questions and doubts and misgivings. And rather than argue the point, there is wisdom, surely, in giving space for people to find out the truth for themselves firsthand. Come and see. Come and see for yourself. Now, we are living through a time of mixed messages, of disinformation, and of misinformation. Many follow conspiracy theories and false narratives and they're the ones who've become the real victims of the so-called fake news, whipped up into promoting irrational beliefs and engaging in aggressive behaviour. And so at this time we pray for Joe Biden, a follower of Jesus, as he addresses the many sceptics in his country, that he might be a Philip, encouraging people to come and see, come and see the reality, come and see the truth, and the truth will become plain, and the tumult and the shouting cease. And for those who have a, a mission spirit, seeking to win others for Jesus, it's very important to invite people to come and see. Come and see for yourself and allow God to do the rest. And so we come to sincerity and spontaneity, verses 47 to 51. Nathaniel was a sincere seeker. And Jesus had seen him under the fig tree and observed that he was a good man. He was open, he was honest, he was genuine. There was nothing false about him. There was no deceit. Uh, for those who may be uh, listening overseas or watching and joining us, uh, we have an expression in Australia, fair dinkum. Fair dinkum means the real thing. And this man, Nathaniel, was fair dinkum. A conversation ensues. Nathaniel asks, where did you get to know me? And Jesus reply, replies, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And the encounter, that encounter is enough. It's sufficient for Nathaniel to spontaneously declare his trust in Jesus. Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. And Jesus then tells him of wonderful things, drawing on an image straight out of the book of Genesis. It's Jacob's dream of a ladder set up from earth to heaven. Very truly, he says to Nathaniel, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending. This is God linking heaven and earth. But Jesus continues on as he speaks uh, to Nathaniel and he says the angels of God are ascending and descending on himself, Jesus, the Son of Man. And this is precisely what Jesus came to do through his sacrifice on the cross, the ancient sacrifice of the cross, drawing us and all humanity to himself and towards heaven. And so it's important today for Jesus to see our motives, to see what's within us as he finds us like Nathaniel. We're waiting, 
we're eager, we're ready. And to those sincerely and seriously considering the Christian way to become a follower of Jesus, it's good advice to find a shady space under your own fig tree in this great quest. Again, finally, pray for Joe Biden, a follower of Jesus, that during his administration, he and indeed others will help to bind up the wounds of division, to be sincere in the search for truth, and that there will be room for spontaneity in reconciliation. Suddenly the penny drops and allow the Holy Spirit to move in the hearts of men and women everywhere. God's Spirit has, has a wonderful way of surprising and shocking and pulling us up and turning us around and bringing us to our knees in repentance, granting mercy and grace and bringing forgiveness and transformation and new life and hope. So all this is made possible through the saving death and resurrection of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. In him alone will the tumult and the shouting die. For he is the Prince of Peace and to him be the glory and the power and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Perhaps we should pause for a moment and pray. God, we do thank you that you searched us out and you found us and you called us. You said to us, follow me. And in your mercy and in your grace and in the moving of your spirit, we did follow and we have followed. And please let us follow you through to the end of our lives. Help us as we share our faith to invite others to come and see for themselves that in you, indeed, there is life and light and salvation. And help us, Father, to be spontaneous as we live and share life with others and allow your spirit to move freely among us that the world would know your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we stay seated as we affirm together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. Sovereign God, all the world is yours and you love and care for everyone who lives together on this fragile planet. In this time of political unrest in the United States, we bring our prayers for those responsible for the orderly, calm and peaceful transition of power to the incoming new president, President-elect Joe Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and all their team. We pray that all Americans will accept with good grace the lawfully elected new government and fully support them when they are inducted into their roles of leadership on Wednesday this week, with no further scenes of mayhem and violence. In a moment of silence, we all pray for President-elect Joe Biden and for Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Loving God, in your mercy, God of the Church, we pray for your blessing upon all who leading church, all who leading churches of every denomination in the difficult time of dealing with the pandemic. With all the extra stresses and strains this highly contagious virus places on them. We ask you to bless the leaders of our Anglican Church of Australia, members of synods and committees parish councils and all parish groups, particularly in our Diocese of Newcastle. May our bishops Peter, Charlie and Sonia and our Archdeacon Arthur lead wisely and well. May each member of our Diocesan Council and our own parish council be gifted with all they need to make visionary decisions for our future. We pray for Reverend Paul as he leads us today and next Sunday and through February until Reverend Kate arrives. Be with her, we pray, as she prepares to come with us, with her family, at the beginning of March. Empowering God in your mercy. God of community, hear our prayer today for all doctors, nurses and healthcare workers at the front line, keeping our community safe. Keep them well, loving God. Protect them from catching the virus and from total exhaustion. Empower those developing and distributing the vaccines to to knowledge as to who should receive the vaccine first. And may we not forget our needy Papua New Guinea and South Pacific Island neighbours and help them find ways to control this virus and keep the most vulnerable in our community safe and well. Faithful God, in your mercy. God of compassion, we bring to you for your love and care all who are in distress, pain, anguish or grief. We pray this morning for those living with a disability and those in nursing homes with few visitors, feeling sad and neglected. Bless with the knowledge of your presence and love for them, all members of our parish now living in nursing homes, and help us not to forget them. We pray for all affected by coronavirus, holding up to you especially the people of the United Kingdom, the United States, and other countries overwhelmed by the pandemic. May all who are sick, anxious or afraid know the calm reassurance of your peace and healing, we pray. And today we pray for all those affected by the earthquake in Indonesia. Gentle God, in your mercy. God of all the ages, We give you thanks for all who have gone before us into your kingdom, giving thanks today for all those who have gone before us, who have taught us the faith. May we join with them one day in your kingdom, where we will be singing your praises forever. Almighty God, 
you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. And as we remain seated, a greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. 
merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Draw near with faith to feed on Christ in your hearts with thanksgiving.
sing the uh, reflection hymn be known to us in breaking bread. and praise that when we were still far off you met us in your son and brought us home dying and living he declared your love gave us grace and opened the gate of glory may we who share Christ's body live his risen life we who drink his cup bring life to others we whom the spirit lights give light to the world father we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us now. Well, thank you once again, everybody, uh, both here in uh, uh, St John the Baptist Church and uh, those who have joined us uh, online. Thank you uh, for sharing uh, this service with you today uh, and may the experience be uh, a blessing uh, to you especially uh, in this coming week a time for a blessing the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God almighty father son holy spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn, filled with the Spirit's power, with one accord. Why not? 